what's that like to think like two years ago yeah. you were Xeroxing 50 cents picture and now you got all of them with all eyes on, on you guys. Y'all the Far East Movement. We're like, what the? Right? <laughs> and then he goes, yo, I dig y'all stuff. We were like, no, this, this didn't happen. Someone punched me in the face. That couldn't have happened. RJ here, hanging out at the Young Hollywood studio with the one and only Far East Movement. Yeah! yeah. What's up? Hello. So here's the thing, we've been following you guys for a while. We've, we've been on the set of your music videos, like yeah. at G6, we were there. We've been in the studio with you. We've been to a bunch of parties with you. First time we've actually finally had you on our turf. Yo, this is the first time we've been in your house, and I gotta say, you guys decorated nicely. This is, this is a crib. What took so long crib. to get you up in here? We, we needed the invite. You guys thought, you know, we might leave with an extra piece of furniture, but now you trust us. You know that it's okay to let the Far East Movement in the crib. Right. And we appreciate it. Now, I want, I want to talk about the evolution of Far East Movement, because we, we sure. first caught up with you about three and a half years ago. This is before Like a G6, before any of that. Yeah. When, you know, you're just a band doing some music before everybody worldwide knew you guys. What's What's been the biggest change you've seen over the last few years? No, we're still the same, the same dudes. We still walk down Wilshire handing out CDs and, you know, trying to get hurt. But no, it's, you know, I think it, it, it kind of shows the growth. You know, we learned a lot about branding, a lot about not only just being the artists and the writers and producers, but you know, we go out there and, and like a lot of the stuff you see is custom made by our team. And, you know, really just getting our hands dirty and evolving the business and evolving the music, evolving the touring, just kind of growing. You know, this is something that we've always wanted to do. And we finally come out with our second official album. We always tell this story, like we used to intern at Interscope, you know, like for our publicist, Greg. And so it's crazy to be able to release, uh, you know, an official album. It's a crazy story though, going from an intern to actually, to being the artist on the label. Man, we, we, we appreciate it. People don't realize like, stuff like that actually happens. You feel like, no, you know, that, that can't happen. You get to learn from the best. The people that are putting records that you see like 50 Cent, and Will I Am walk through and Gwen Stefani and think, you know, damn, you know, that that's really inspiring. And uh, Anyone yell at you while you were doing doing your intern thing? He did, usually. Yeah, I was, I was <laughs> what was he saying? What was he good at, what was he was not like, good man, at? Man, you, you Xerox 50's face crooked. He ain't gonna like that. You gotta, you gotta center it. I was, I'm, I'm you, terrible with scissors, you man. Gotta, you gotta center it, man. And what was the craziest moment you remember when you were you were interning there, whatever happened at the office? The craziest moment, I think, interning. Uh, oh, actually, one time, we were uh, in the elevator with Marilyn Manson. Oh, that's crazy. And Marilyn Manson is tall as hell, and I did not know that, and just kind of starstruck for the first time. I'm like, oh, Marilyn, this is James, and all. Hey, damn. Trip. Now, I, want, I want to talk about the Tom Tom Club real quick because y'all said you, you interned at Interscope. Oh, yeah. I was there a couple years ago and y'all were performing. Mary J. Blige in the audience, Dr. Dre in the audience, Gaga. Oh, oh, yes. You had everybody. Y'all put on your space helmets. Yeah. What's that like to think like two years ago yeah. you were Xeroxing 50 cents picture and now you got all of them with all eyes on, on you guys? What Yo, was that moment there? That, you just reminded me of that moment. And for all you don't know, Tom Tom Club, super exclusive place. You only know yeah. if you know. I can't even say where it's wow, at, but it's, it's that, the spot where stuff goes down. Yeah, you know what? This, this is something that we, we're not trying to wake up from. That's why we're wearing the shades. That was the day that, that was, uh, we saw Dre in the elevator. No, yeah. that, that was a different day. Was that a different yeah, one? That, what that happened was, that day when you saw Dre in the elevator? Was, that was the oh, exactly Grammy the party. Doc, we ran into Dr. Dre, and he goes, yo, y'all the Far East Movement. We're like, what's the... Right? <laughs> and then he goes, yo, I dig y'all stuff. And we were like, no, this, this didn't happen. Someone punched me in the face. That couldn't have happened. And and you guys have you know come up with a lot of other people that, that a few years ago weren't all that big and now they're huge. LMFAO is a great example. Red Fu. And Yo, those are our boys, man. Yeah, we were baby. doing the same clubs together. Like yep. there'd be like 15 people in the crowd. They were. We always we got to give them the credit because we almost say like they were one of the reasons why we got noticed to get a record deal. They put us on our first tour, uh, the Party Rock tour back in 2009, which caught the attention of Martin Kirzenbaum, Cherry Tree Records and they signed us. We actually did a cooking segment with them, believe it or not, in 2009. What did you cook? We're at their house. What did you cook? We were at their crib. He made tofu scrambled eggs, surprise. Red food made tofu. Red food literally did. Nice. And he made a beat and a song while he was cooking. Cooking. Cooking it up. And, and he had the wall of panties. Do they still have that oh, at their yeah, place? Of course. <laughs> I think they might need a bigger house now. <laughs> and speaking of Martin and Cherry Tree, I mean Gaga, she's blown up beyond belief too. Yeah. And y'all have been on tour with her. What, what's the evolution yeah. of that thing? Just watching her evolve and you evolve and all sort of at the uh, same time. Well, I mean, it was an amazing experience going on tour with Gaga. And one of the most memorable parts of that tour was going backstage and just eating pizza with her. 
in, right. in a little recording studio. But it's like one big family where we tour together, we collab together, we get in the studio, we hang out together. And I mean, that, that really makes a good situation to be in when you're an artist. You, you don't feel alone, you know, you, you definitely have a crew. And that's cool, everyone sort of works together because you look at, you know, Red One blew up Gaga's album, now your latest, one of your latest singles, you got Red One doing doing the track. Which, who we met on that tour. What was it like working with him? Because Red's a good friend, he's been here on the couch. And Red is it's the- It's interesting getting in his mind. He is the most joyous, kind person ever. Dude. When, <laughs> that was it, that, that was Red. That's Red. That's always, always him. Yo. The guy's in the best mood no matter said, what I'm is going on. Live yeah. my life. And you got some other interesting tracks. Which one, if, if there's one song someone has to listen to, and it might not be one of the singles already released. Turn up the love. Love. Yeah, it's everyone says yeah. Why love. would you guys say turn up the love? Why is that that's the song y'all pick? Because we got nothing but love oh. to give. <laughs> yeah. So turn up the love. Turn up the love. We're turning up the love. Go ahead now, floss your love like a heart of gold. Go. Dirty bass will make a tootsie roll. Go. If you don't low on the floor, I got a crew that'll handle that. We wrote the song for the fans, so because it, it was inspired by being on tour and feeling all the energy the people are giving you and the love and thinking, right. oh, so, yeah. you should tell them about the uh, the contest. Oh, yeah, that's tell right. We're working with Vidi. We and, love Vidi. And Shout out to Vidi. Do something .org. We wanted to make the song more than just you know a music video, and we connected with these organizations to get the word out, and we really just want to inspire people over the summer do something good you know like yeah. so we're having people shoot their own clips like I can shoot you maybe giving DJ Verman a water so or Verman can do something nice for you like dance for you or something you know something gonna I don't know you're gonna dance for us now <laughs> just anything, yeah. but but it's just about helping out your community doing good things for yeah. people and what we're gonna do is all you got to do is tag it number sign turn up the love FM we're gonna find it and make one big music video made by the fans. I like it. All right, last thing, I want to go to each one of you. If you had to describe what Far East Movement's all about in just one word, what's your word gonna be? Go ahead, bro, man. Start there. Oh, you're doing last. Uh, Can I do two words? Uh, no, it depends. would be like, I'd be like hell. Yeah. Dirty. Bass. Bam! Hey, that was good. It was like it was scripted almost. I like that. It's like a freestyle right there. There you go. Far East Movement, thank you for coming hanging out with us. Dirty Bass. Make sure y'all check it out. The contest. Y'all need to go check that out too. Yeah, turn up the love. Do something, please. Get, get it poppin', pop to Molly. Dirty bass, we so bad at body. Too legit, we can't quit the party. Super freaks, no Illuminati. So, one, two, hit the booze. We on you, too. Nothing to lose, so let it loose. Cause the sheep don't sleep like bop, 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 bop. Drop low to the L-O. V-E, gotta get my.